Welcome to the Academy of Decorative Painting, sponsored by Global Art Supply, manufacturers of artist quality multimedia acrylics and brushes. Global Art Supply, bringing artists of the world together. Hi, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen, and for the next couple hours, what I'm going to do is walk you through a fun Chippendale variation piece. We're going to paint a cute little bird, some flowers, and we're going to do it on this wonderful uh, shelf. This shelf is available from our studio if you uh, would like to paint this. All the supplies I'm going to be using, the Heritage Multimedia paints, mediums, uh, brushes, everything's available from our studio. You can find it on our online store at jansenonlinestore.com, and uh, all of it will be there there for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to prep this piece for the Chippendale Technique. Now the Chippendale Technique, I've done an expanded uh, uh, video series of this, uh, which is also available, and it starts out at the very beginning. This is kind of a, a beginning design here, even though it does have a bird on it, uh, but the, the actual technique we'll be using, the process of the Chippendale Technique, is not a complicated technique, and if you mix the, the faux medium in the right, uh, right amount, like I'm going to show you, then the technique gets really, really quite simple. So um, what I'm going to do here is we're going we're gonna to prep this piece, but when the prep this piece, we have to prep it specially for the Chippendale technique. Because we want to have our brush needs to slide very smoothly over the surface, so that surface needs to be smooth, but that surface also needs to be very hard, which means that no moisture is going to be absorbed off of, out of the paint into the surface, as opposed to a matte surface. Now we're going to make that surface hard by adding uh, what we call Heritage Multimedia. This is the dark primer. I'm going to be using black and dark primer, about one to one, and uh, then I'm going to coat the entire, the entire surface and sand it lightly and then give it a second coat. And then what we're going to do is uh, further prep it with a little bit of sealer. Now if you don't have dark primer and if you have the Heritage Multimedia uh, um, the little multi-surface sealer here, you can go ahead and use that also the uh, multi-surface sealer replacing the dark primer. When you use the dark primer, the difference between the two is the dark primer already has some pigment in there, so you end up using a little bit less paint. The, the mediums are not as expensive as the paint, so whenever you can replace paint with mediums for you as an artist, that's much better, and that's what we try to do. So uh, using the dark primer, I have it here, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it. And all I'm going to do is uh, take out a equal amount, and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I'll put out about an equal amount of the dark primer and an equal amount of the paint, and I'm at a slight angle here because of the camera and the glare, so we'll just put out some paint, and then I'm just going to use my brush, this is one of our uh, base coating brushes, and I'm just going to just brush mix this together here, and that works pretty nice, this together, it mixes up real notice, it mixes up really quick together, and, and very nice. And then what we're going to do is just base coat the entire surface here, and uh, trying to make it as smooth as possible without any kind of brush marks. You'll notice you'll get, it'll be very easy to get one coat coverage, even though you have thinned the paint out with an equal amount of the dark primer, and that is because the dark primer is already tinted black for you, so you get that one, nice one coat coverage. So first off, let's go ahead and do this. Give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to do this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it really dry and then uh, sand it lightly, and if I need to, it's not absolutely necessary, but if I need to, uh, I will give it a little bit of a second coat. Now under the studio lights here, this starts to dry a little bit quick. If it does ever start to dry, just mix in a little water and you can just keep going, okay? So give me a couple minutes. I'm going to go uh, give this a second, I mean sand it, dry it, sand it, give it a second coat. Then we'll be back and we'll give it that coat of sealer, okay? See you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Now, what I did is I, I finished that first coat, and um, 
And I was just wiping it off here a little bit with the towel. You got to be kind of careful because this paint has a lot of pigment in it, and that dust is is just a real black, black dust. So you got to be kind of careful. It'll go everywhere. So I sanded it. I got it dry, and uh, that just took about five minutes on a hair dryer here, and I got it dry. And then I give it a second coat. Now normally I give it a second coat with what I have, but I used up what I had already in that first mix, and I thought I'm going to warm this background slightly. Uh, you can uh, just like in the instructions, you can you can give it. A second coat like I told you earlier given a second coat and then give it a coat of sealer but at some point in time if you want you can change the background you can do these Chippendales on any kind of dark background dark reds dark greens dark blues um, and of course the the traditional black what I'm going to do is I'm just going to warm it I said oh, I'm going to warm this background just a little bit and uh, so I'll do that with the addition of the naphthol red light the naphthol red light is a warmer pigment so uh, instead of just uh, making up some more black and covered it up which I really don't need to even though after I sanded this uh, smooth it still got a uh, complete one coat coverage here so um, you know that first coat did such a wonderful job I'm just going to go ahead and take just a little bit of my uh, my red here this time and I, I only need a little bit of it here I'm just going to be covering up some brush marks here I'm going to take some red and I'm going to take some black here this time out like this and this time what I'm going to use uh, just to help uh, cover everything up and to keep that surface really hard is to give it a coat of multi-surface sealer so you can prep it by giving it the, the primer and the black again and then give it a coat of multi-surface sealer but since I really don't need to I'm going to give it the coat of multi-surface sealer but to warm the background I'm going to have a little paint in this multi-surface sealer this time just to change it or you can just use the multi-surface sealer all by itself now the multi-surface sealer will make the, the, the background a little bit shiny uh, because it is a gloss but what it does is it'll make that background really really hard and that's what we want so our brush slides over that surface and we'll get lots of streaks in everything that we do so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some of this out here and I'll just use my brush and it'll probably run here on the palette a little bit because we're at a slight angle so I'll have to manage that but um Let's lift that up just a bit. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll take this. Now you can add some water to this to help thin it out a little. And I'll take some black and I'll take some red and I'll get that nice warm. And I like a little bit of modeling or a little variation to the color here. So something like that. We'll mix some sealer in it. And then I'm just going to use this as, a, as the next coat here onto the background. So I'll pick up sometimes a little red, sometimes a little black. Very, you know, the camera probably won't pick it up too much, but because uh, it's just very subtle but it'll look pretty nice here and that'll be pretty good and you could marbleize it too if you wanted to come in here and marbleize reds and stuff you could do that but uh, you know just get a little bit of warmth here to it but what's most important is the sealer because going on now this clear sealer but it's, it has a little bit of paint in it but that clear sealer is going to make this surface really hard for us and um, then that will uh, allow our brush to slide over the surface so I'm going to get this uh, dry and I'll, I'll finish warming up the part of it here I'm going to get this dry and you have to make sure this is very very dry because if the sealer at all and it may even take a couple hours but if you use it on a hair dryer and put it on low for and just walk away from it for about 10-15 minutes it'll be fine but you don't want the sealer uh, to get really really tacky um, if you heat it up really hot real fast to try to fast dry this thing the sealer will get tacky you're going to have to let it cool down it won't get so tacky when it cools down you just don't want it tacky when you go to transfer your pattern because uh, if it if it's at all tacky when you transfer your pattern then you had a you have the chance that it's going to grab onto your graphite lines and you don't want that so just make sure that it cools down if you heat the, if you heat the surface up too much that will make the sealer tacky um, just make sure that it's you cool it down just a little bit okay and um, then once you get it all dry you can go ahead and transfer your pattern with your uh, white graphite and I'll go ahead and do that since this is pretty much ready to go and then uh, we'll be back and we'll start painting some chipping down. Okay, welcome back. What I've done is I've uh, go ahead and I transferred the burden and I transferred, I just kind of took a pencil here, chalk pencil, and kind of sketched in a design that I want to paint onto this one. So it'll be a little bit different too from uh, 
uh, some of the other step photos that you see, but we'll, of course, include this right along with the whole thing. So uh, you'll get actually two different designs for you if you want to try the smaller uh, plaque or if you want to try uh, this one right here under the box. Um, what I'm going to be doing here now is we're going to be doing the undercoating. Now, in Chippendale, what happens in Chippendale is that... Uh, Thomas Chippendale went, of course, over to China and brought back all of these uh, designs, furniture uh, designs, and this black lacquerware from China into Pontypool, England, and the artists of Pontypool, England. And the the gold and the black are two very high contrast colors, and they work really, really good. But if you're going to try to do some painting and stuff on it, it becomes very difficult. So the Chippendale painters do develop this technique where they do an undercoating of white. And an undercoating of white allows the colors that are put on top of them to show through. Because as, as light goes down through your color layer, it hit whites and reflects. White is a color that reflects light. That is why in the summertime you can go outside and wear white and be feel cooler than you could if you wore black. Black absorbs the color, absorbs the rays, and doesn't reflect it. And so if I put a, a wash of red on white, it will look brighter than a wash of red on black. Okay, so to make these uh, colors really vibrant and come off and be able to go very well with gold trim that we're going to be adding, we're going to do an underpainting of white. And so we want to make sure we have that. Now, you can do transparent washes of white. There's a bunch of different variations of this technique that I show you in the Chippendale series. What I'm going to do is follow the basic Chippendale technique. And uh, what we're going to be doing is painting it mostly. I like to paint it mostly with like a flat brush. These are... Um, the Global Art Supplies uh, uh, shader brushes. These are the eights, the six, the four. So you can also have a filbert. Filberts are always some of my favorite ones to, to paint with. But, uh, you know, a, a brush like an eight or a six here will paint this really nice. I also have a quill liner for any liner work that I'll do here later on. But uh, these will work really nice. So... Um, I'll use basically some flats. Uh, I like the flats because they're different and it from a round or a filbert, which I tend to stroke a lot with when I use that. So this, uh, these flats will work a lot better for me if I want to paint some different type of flowers. Um, I'm also going to be uh, using uh, some what we call faux medium out with this. So I have my, my white and I put my faux over here. Here we go. This is the Heritage Multimedia faux uh, medium, faux finish medium. Now what this is, is this is a medium that is a slower drying time. It's very thick. It has the consistency of the paint. So it's, it is quite thick. And uh, you're, we're going to mix this up with the colors like titanium white here. And this is going to help us get our transparency to the color. We don't want to have a complete opacity to our first uh, layers of color. I know that white reflects it, but if we allow some streaks and some interest and do this color layer back and forth a couple times, we can get a lot of depth and we'll actually use very little color when it comes to the painting part of this. So what I'm going to be doing is actually thinning out my initial coat of color or base coating that I'm going to be doing on the painting with some faux medium. So what I'm going to do is put out some faux medium here, and what I'm going to do is put out about three parts you can go two to three, somewhere around in there, about three parts of faux medium to uh, one part of the paint here. And test that out to see about where I am if I like that transparency. So about one part of the paint to three parts of the faux medium. Then I'll reach over here and grab a little palette knife and we'll just mix that together here. And as I stroke on the first flowers, I'll test its transparency. Now you can just leave this out on your palette like this. It's going to stay nice for your entire painting. There's no worry. If it ever does start to tighten up at all or get a little sticky, because you're playing maybe a bit long, okay, then you just whip it up with a little extender. That's all you need to do. Okay, so we'll uh, just mix this up really, really well. Make sure you mix it up really well. And you notice it's nice and creamy. It's got a nice consistency to it. You don't want to give the surface any kind of uh, uh, extender or something like that. There are some versions that I will do that, but you really don't because you want this um, really to stick where you're going to be putting it. So you want to avoid that at all, if at all possible. With the first go through, you can have a little water in your brush. With the first go through, what I'm going to do is just basically uh, lightly coat 
the every all the all the objects here and see how my transparency is going to work with this color so we'll just mix this a little bit of this all the way across the brush here and we'll just come in and we'll lightly paint this and this will be a pretty good that's a pretty good um has a pretty good transparency to it for what I want because as it starts to dry it'll go down but what you want to do is you want to see you want it to kind of block the background a little bit but you want it to, to see a little bit of that background through uh through that so um you know maybe a bit of water in that also but as it dries you can see it's it stays kind of transparent that's what you want so we'll streak this on here like this that'll be nice and so a little bit of water into this is fine. And then uh, as I stroke the flowers, you know, two or three strokes here to each petal. And you'll get that. And that's what you want to see is those streaks right there like that that come through. That's what we want. So and I'll just pull these petals right in here towards the center like this. Two or three. Sometimes maybe two big ones. Sometimes you can put the color maybe on the side of the brush and pull that in. You know, you want to make each petal a little bit different, so, so we'll pull this in and, and then sometimes side load it if you want to get a little different. But most important is you want to get streaks. Now, you don't want to get, you know, a tremendous amount of streaks because that can also be distracting to the flower if you get too many here. But something like that, that'll, that'll be a pretty little flower. And we have a small one up here and I'm adding just a little water to this just to make it flow really nice but it is sliding over the surface really easy and then sometimes like in a back flower like this don't reload your brush each time so that you get some variation in the petals that way too so we'll just and if you notice I don't I tend not to turn my piece I tend not to turn my piece because if I turn it, then I end up stroking everything exactly the same. And all the flowers look exactly the same. So I try not to uh, to turn that very often there. And I will come over here with one here. A little leaf right there. That's good. And sometimes I'll paint a couple with this, and sometimes I'll change brushes to a smaller brush or something like that. You have a rose right here. Now, most people will turn this to paint it this way, but I'm going to go ahead and paint it in the down position here, just like this. And the rose is just like the flowers. It's just the stroking is different. So, you know, here I'm just going to uh, put on a few little turning center petals here, and then I'm just going to sweep right across like this with a big stroke right across uh, the front of it here just like that so it's painted exactly the same as the other flowers you know with the same kind of transparency nice streaky but here's you're going to have the one part here and then the center little part here and then to the outside petals here we'll paint these outside the reaching petals just like we did the little petals here just kind of pull in and it'll vary the strokes a bit maybe just cut one across here like that. Pull this one in. And that one in there. And you just want these to diminish all the way down. So that row sits in there really nice. Here we have some little berries that we want to add. Just a little turn here of the berry. Here. And that'll turn around like that. Like that. So. So you have little berries, we have little flowers, and the, but all of them start out here the same. Just an undercoating of the white and a nice streaky white. Leaves here, I'll have a leaf here. Sometimes pull in, sometimes just to get a difference, pull out like that so your leaves look different. They, and that's what you want on this whole Chippendale painting. You want everything to look a little different. So try not to set up a, a stroking pattern, which for me as an artist was a hard thing to do for a long time because you know learning as a stroke painter I would paint you know usually one two three turn one two three turn and it was hard to um, to make everything look a little different and so one thing that helped me was to be able to paint just like this without turning the piece and that made everything look a little different sometimes not always for the better but it did look different okay so we'll uh, Stroke this one on, a couple strokes to each one of these. 
And a different brush will give you a different look, you know. I mean, if you find that you're getting everything looking a little bit too much the same, try stroking it with a filbert so you get something a little different. Or use the chisel edge of your brush, you know. Use the side of your brush, you know, instead of using it flat. And, and uh, look for some differences that way. Here we go. And get some... So you get some nice differences to the uh, the petals. Now the inside, see, I'll, I'll, I'll stop short of that center there, leaving a little bit there, um, uh, you know, for the uh, the inside. We need that dark for our inside later. This is going to be like a little flower bud. And we'll put like a little stem out to that one. And a couple other smaller leaves out here, like this. Just like this. There we go. And we'll have a couple of more berries here. These little berries will come out here. There we go. And this one will be fine. One right there. That'll work. And we'll put another little bud right out here. And we'll just a little line right out to it. Now the bird out here will uh, start right up here on the top of his neck by the head and we'll just pull down. We'll just streak this down a little bit through his body. Just a little bit in there so he'll sit back behind the flower. Then we'll put it up a little bit heavier here onto his wing so his wing will come forward. Here like that. There we go. And we'll put it a little heavier here on the head. So his head will come forward, so I'll load that a couple times there. Put that around, just kind of throwing that in just a bit. Get a nice curvature to him there. And then we'll pull some strokes here for his tail. Just kind of streak those in, give him a nice little tail like that. Maybe have a soft little leaf back behind there. And have a tendril out here, maybe a soft little leaf over here, just adding a couple little things, and we need to get that in there, and we can shoot another little tendril or a little scrolly tendril off of that one there, maybe even a little leaf shape right off of here, that'll go off that way. Okay, so that kind of fills up our design kind of everything that I want to do in there that's good now the next step is if you have a lot of that left over you can just transfer it right to your wet palette it'll stay nice for you but uh, I'm going to get this done within a matter of time you know all within a couple hours so I'm just going to leave that on my palette right now it'll be good for the entire paint what I need to do is go over and get this dry I want to get it completely dry you could give a coat of sealer onto it to protect it or a coat of glazing medium on to protect uh, the surface of it if you've never painted like this before it's kind of a good idea um, but we will definitely do do that later on also before we start tinting our colors but I'm just going to go get it dry you can remove any of your graphite lines or chalk lines we'll come back and we'll do a burnt umber shadowing step before we do this one more time okay so let me get it dry and I'll be right back okay welcome back now what I did is I just Blew a little hot air over for just a minute. It's still a little bit tender. And then I just took a damp rag and just kind of tap through and take off some of my chalk lines. You don't need to really worry about too much of your graphite lines because, you know, they're white and it's all going to tint and it's all going to cover up. So, you know, but if you have them on real heavy and you still see them a lot, you might want to lighten them up, okay? But I have some out here. And uh, what I like, it's, it's really nice is... Uh, because the surface is so hard, the graphite lines don't really stick to it too well. So if you notice one out to the outside, you can just use uh, your finger like this and just rub that right off. You know, I'll leave his beak on there, but maybe the one up here above his head, I'll take that off there. But because uh, you get that surface really hard, your graphite removes really easy. You can move it just with your finger, just by rubbing it. And that's a good idea to remember in some of your painting. You know, not always do you want your surface really hard like this because it can cause things to beat up if you don't have enough glue in it. And since we're using a lot of foam medium, it sticks to that surface really well. So you don't have to worry about that surface being real hard. But it does give these beautiful streaks, and that's what we want in our painting for right now. Now what I'm going to do is just do a gentle shadow. And 
Uh, you don't have to, uh, and I just got some uh, texture medium, in, I mean not texture, but uh, full medium in that. But you don't have to do this. I'm just going to show you this. Let's just give a surface a light coat of extender. This will give you a little bit longer at the hair dryer if you do this. But uh, what it does is it will give you lots of time to play with your shadow. Especially if you've never done this kind of technique before. It's a good idea to give a light coat of extender medium over the surface. And it just needs to be a light coat. You don't need to have very much of it here. So you can stretch it out. You can even wipe it with a, uh, a towel here. Use a soft towel. Just kind of tap through it a little bit. And be a little gentle here because that paint still I kind of rushed the hair dryer a little bit. But uh, a little gentle there. And... So we'll put that off to the side here. Now what I'm going to do is uh, just take out some uh, burnt umber. That's uh, raw umber there. We just need a little bit of the burnt umber. And there it is. And no wonder we were hiding it over there. It's almost, it's almost all gone here. So we'll squirt out just a little bit of the burnt umber there. That's all we need. This is a nice shadow. Sometimes... Um, in the techniques, I will use, uh, you know, a couple of shadows, sometimes burnt umber with a little red violet, sometimes raw umber to make a piece look a little bit older. But in traditional, uh, in the traditional Chippendale, they would use a burnt umber as, as a shadowing in between two layers of white. And so, you know, it'll give you a little bit more depth. And if you just squeeze down, you know, squeeze the edge right there like that and then tighten the lid down like that, you'll know how much burnt umber you have in your, uh, your paint tube. And uh, I have about half of it left there. So that'll be, uh, I'm going to be having to get some more pretty soon. Now what, what I'll do is, um, just take some of this burnt umber, and you can use just a little bit of extender. And I always just pour all of my extender into a cap like this that I just dunk into. Or actually, it's kind of a, a plastic jar. And I just dunk the, the plastic jar right into it. The, I mean, the brush right into that jar. And then I'm going to use this to just kind of go around, especially around the centers here. And just kind of swirl it around. And... You can have it a little heavier here into the center. You don't have to do any kind of floated color or any special blending out. This is just a shadow because we're going to put white back up on top of this. So we do know we want some shadow. We want some shadow down in here in the center of our rose. We're going to want some shadow uh, down here by the bowl of the rose, down at the very bottom of it. I'll put some of that down as a shadow there. Maybe right along the edges of the petals there. We'll put some there. Um, right where leaves go underneath flowers, they should have some shadowing there. So you'll see that, and you'll um, you'll see this in your step photos too. But I just kind of quickly go through. This is a wonderful technique. It doesn't take very long to paint. I love it, and and I love that you can paint it so casually. You know. So then I'll put some there. Let's put some at the bottom of these little berries here. Some right down here, some right there. Uh, on the bird, let's put a little on the top of his head. That'll put the highlight here towards the center of the design. Underneath his wing and in his body here. Maybe on the back of his wing we'll put some. So it's a real gentle little shadow here. We'll put some on the back of his tail. Like that. And... Um, little water into that. That's, I'm just using water or you could use extender. I'm tapping a little extender. You can mix both together with this paint so it doesn't hurt anything. You can have water and extender together on this paint. Um, I can come around the center here. I'll make that one nice. There we go. And uh, maybe around here on the, these berries that I'm going to have here. Put a little shadowing. And some shadow underneath the, on the leaves, right as they go underneath the flowers. Okay. So we'll have some shadowing here. Shadowing here. Push this leaf back a little bit. Uh, forgot that one up there. Maybe on the base of this little bit. Maybe right here and then on the base leaf, that little light spot coming out right there. And on the base of this one, and push that back there just a bit. Kind of check everything. Sometimes I will pull a vein line out or something, but that's not, you know, on a, on a leaf. But that's not all that important. You can do that in the final tinting of color. You can express that. So, you know, just make sure you have everything kind of touched up here. 
light areas like that. That's pretty good, and it doesn't need to be smooth at all. You know, you can tap some with your finger if you want to smooth it off, but it doesn't need to be smooth at all because the next layer of white's going to cover it all up again. Okay, which back to the hair dryer now, especially since I use this. Uh, the extender on it and you see that this takes just a couple minutes but since I use extender on there I'm gonna to have to dry that all off there so let me go get it dry we'll be back and we're doing white again okay see you in a minute okay welcome back uh, I got that dry little bit of extender up there not too bad but most of the, uh, the the umbers and stuff are dry now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be over stroking this to set the light color back on top of the shadow so we put down a reflective color then we put down a shadow. Now we're going to actually put on whatever we're going to become our highlights. You can use exactly the same brush uh, again, but if the problem is if you use exactly the same brush, it might come out exactly the same. I'm just going to use the same brush, a flat brush, because I enjoy painting Chippendale with a flat brush. Um, but what I'm going to do is drop down in size, so maybe I get a little more streaks or a little bit different look to it. And uh, so I'm going to be using now a number six uh, flat, but you could use exactly the same brush. It doesn't hurt anything, and sometimes I do with a lot of paintings. I will do that. So, and maybe even put a little bit of this onto the side this time. But we're going to come through our, our painting here and uh, basically put the light edges back up on top here and just kind of streak through, just streak like this through, and uh, this will uh, put the shadow up underneath. Let's come in a little closer so you can see that nice and close here. And I'll put on, you know, sometimes I'll put on little edges like that now, sometimes I'll wait later. But if I pick up the color real heavy on the side, it's all the way across the brush and I'll put it on heavy across the side, I could use this little edge like this, almost like a little liner brush, and put on some additional streaks here and make the petals or kind of dress up the flower a little bit. But see, the light color now sits up on top of this umber and the umber ends up going underneath here. We'll streak that up just a bit. So sometimes switching to a different brush is good. You could use the same if you like your Chippendale a little bit softer. You just use the big, the same big brush and it'll go on a little softer. You don't have to have it quite this streaky. So sometimes I paint it very soft. Sometimes I paint it very streaky. But uh, I don't need to do too much to this bird here just to set a little bit of light up on top of that umber. And a little bit here on his head. Like that, and then on his tail, you know, just a little bit set the, the light up on top of that shadow. The shadow should not sit on top of the light, just kind of whisper a little bit so that the light sits up on top of that shadow. And uh, we'll have, well, I just grew the size of that leaf a bit, that's all right. And we'll put just stroke over that a little so some of that shadow sits on top. Not all of it has to sit on top, just most of it has to sit on top here. Put just a bit there. Let's come up here to this top flower here. And we'll, just gives you a little different look. Here we go. The edges here. Some different edges sometimes pull out just make the flower look a little different you know tint up really pretty that way too and we'll just uh, bring the round edge of the berries up here and we'll just kind of don't want the berries to look flat just kind of round them up I got a couple of them here looking a little flat so we'll just round them up just a bit like that and uh, Come on back down over here to this. Put some on this flower here. Don't get it too close to that one, so that one will sit up on top here. But we can put this one up a little bit higher. So that that faux medium just causes these streaks so nice because you know, and if you notice that your, you know, your flowers are looking too transparent, maybe you're using a little too much faux medium. So reduce the faux medium, increase the paint. And if you notice that uh, yours are still too opaque, increase your faux medium. Okay, 
if you're painting on like this and it's painting everything out, you can't see your shadow, then um, you might be using too much white in that full medium. So just reduce that a bit. There we go. Just a whisper there. Yeah, it's kind of pretty. And we'll pop this one up. Like that. A little whisper of it over the just right especially right on that edge there leave a little bit of shadow but just right to that edge right where the the shadow and that light is you know so like right in here that's where I want to concentrate on and then I just let this wisp this fade away and that foe will transparent up and you'll get a nice look just like that so just go over the shadow just a little bit but don't go into the deep part of the shadow leaving the deep part of the shadow like way back in here, don't go into there. If you do, like I just almost did, just take your finger and tap some of it out, leave some of that shadow. But now this light sits on top of the dark, and that's what we're looking for. Just like that. A little bit out here. There, that leaves a nice streak to the leaves. And you know, leaves, especially the larger ones, you do want to get some streaks to them so they have some interest. In. Just gonna put a little edge on that one there. Now for the big center part here, I'm gonna start right up here like this, and we'll pull a few of these streaks right down. I'll leave some of that shadow right at the base of it there, and then we'll streak just a, a little bit of this through the back here, and then let's bring right on the edge of the brush. Let's bring some of this out onto the tips of these reaching petals. So I always call these the inside petals, the bowl petals, and then the reaching petals, petals that reach out of the, the flower here. I like those. There we go. So that looks pretty good. You can come back with a second coat or anything that you think needs to have a little bit lighter, but um, the main purpose of this is just to soften our shadow colors and make sure that we have we preserve our streaks. So you don't want to go, you know, too much. You still want to see all of these really, really nice streaks. So now we come to the fun part, which is the tinting of the color. But what to to uh, really uh, preserve this, what we need to do is dry this very well, and then give it a coat of glazing medium or a, a very thin coat of the Heritage Multimedia Cedar. Now, if you're using the cedar, the Heritage Multimedia Cedar is more powerful cedar than than what uh, some of you may have used in the, in the past, and we've made it more powerful. So when I give it as a protective coat to something, I thin it down about almost an equal amount of water, and uh, then I just apply a nice even coat that way. So I'll get it dry. I'm, put, I'm gonna put on some multi-surface cedar because it makes a really hard surface, and I like that. But you don't wanna put it on as thick as it comes out of the bottle. It's thinner. We made it already a little bit thinner, but you don't wanna put it out uh, uh, thick at all. Thin it down with like an even amount of, of water, just a nice uh, thin coat of it. That's enough to protect it because it's a very powerful cedar, okay? So I'll give it a coat and I'll get it dry and then we'll be back and we'll play and have to, we'll do the uh, tinting and the final veiling, what we call veiling of color, okay? See you in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. Now remember one of the things, I, I put an even coat, very, very thin coat of the uh, multi-surface sealer on there and that's really well protected. Just remember one thing, if you use it on a hairdryer on hot and you get the surface hot, it'll be feel a little tacky. You gotta let it cool down, especially before you begin. It won't hurt anything if it's a little tacky if you paint on it now. It's just you never want it tacky when you're transferring graphite lines because it can grab onto them. Okay, so uh, I have this all dry. Now what I'm gonna do is give the surface a a light coat of uh, extender medium again just and you can you can really work on just one flower at a time if you want to that's the way I really kind of suggest so you have lots of working time here but um, you know, I, I would say within 30 minutes or so here, we'd be able to really tint all of these flowers and a light coat of extender over the whole surface here will will last for quite a bit longer than 30 minutes. But I'm gonna put a light coat on here, but if you wanna work one at a time, then take, take your time and work one at a time. Now what we're gonna do is a two processes at the same time. We're gonna go in and we're gonna tint the color 
and tint the colors that we might want to have on there and then we're going to put up a soften them with a, what we call a veiling of color with our original uh, that white and and uh, three parts faux medium to one part white that we put on earlier you might even want to add a little more faux medium this time so that you don't get it uh, completely opaque it's just what we call a veil it's like a bride's veil a veiling of the uh, of the white over the color which will create the highlights so we're going to and we can put in multiple colors and tints and you can do this two or three times i usually do it just once because i like the, the look for it just once and the simplicity of some of the chippendale flowers but you can get really de a lot of depth of this if you repeat this many times let's come in and let's just work on this one center flower here and, and i'll show you what i mean now on that flower there we might want to have some yellow in it um and i'm going to be using the heritage paints and i'm not going to put them out in a in a uh palette or anything this time because I'm going to use just a drop of color. So here's my uh, Hansa yellow, a nice bright yellow. I'll just put a little bit of that out. Um, you have raw sienna, which is a real good one. In one of the colors I, I, I will tend to, to avoid on this is like yellow oxide because yellow oxide is a little more opaque and it can tend to get rid of some of our, our transparency and stuff. So I'll, I won't use that one this time. Um, I'll need some green here, some uh, thalo, I mean, not thalo, but some pine green here. I'll need some pine green for some of my leaves. I like that one. A nice warm red um, and a semi-transparent red, which will work great. It's the Naplo Red Light. So I'll put out just a little bit. You just need a little color, just a little bit for tinting here. And a nice cool red for deeper shadows. This is my red violet. So I'll put out a little bit of that. So, uh, and then some blues. We're probably going to want to have some blues on this one here, too. So, uh, I might have a nice uh, ultramarine blue here, which is a warm blue. A lot of people think blues are cool, and that's not true. Ultramarine blue is a warm blue. Maybe even the thalo blue, which will give you... Uh, I use that with pine green to get more blue greens and, and stuff, and it's a little bit more of a temperature neutral blue. Those work out really nice. So those are, are you know, if I want an orange, I take my uh, my red and my yellow and mix those together. Those work really well. These are uh, basically all I'll be using here. I'm going to use my number six and, and a little bit of um, extender into the brush here. Let's come in where we want maybe this flower to be a little yellow. So I'm going to take a little of my Hansa, which is my bright yellow, and we'll take a look at the little bit of the brightness around through there. And uh, if it gets too bright, just tap that with your paper towel. And some raw sienna. I do love the raw sienna, the night's warmth, and it helps tone that Hansa down. But I want this variation through there. That's really kind of pretty. You get some of this variation in there. Let's put in um, a little bit of warm, and I will usually work from the warms to the cools, but let's put in a little red into this also. We'll come right around here like this with a little bit of our, say our Naplo red light, and we can come down the edge of that here and get a nice, nice dose of this red in there. You can, you know, vary this so that maybe one petal is a little more red and then the other is a little more yellow. That works really nice. Let's put in a little cool red, our red violet, right down into some of our center here, especially down, maybe down here towards create like a shadow cooler side here a little bit. That'll be kind of pretty. Out between the petals, but you know, so you have this nice, you don't, you don't want to do too much so that you get a rainbow here, you know, but you do want to get some nice coloring on here, so that'll work. Nice. Now, see, I won't put a blue in there because that'll start to look like a rainbow, so I'll stop short of, of doing that. But uh, just, you know, getting usually some reds, orangey yellows right in there will work great. Uh, will work great. Um, you know, the blues, you can go into the violets, especially use that ultramarine blue, you can go into the violets. We'll do that in a minute. But now that you have that on there, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right over here, and I'm going to take some of my white that I have, and... Um, I have some of that red still in there. I want to put out an extra little bit of the, you could even use a, a, a you could use the faux medium here, uh, which is what I'm going to use, but you could also use like a glazing medium too. Just going to put out some, some plain faux medium here too, and take some of my uh, color that I had here before, maybe a bit of that yellow in there, keep that nice and warm, and maybe even a bit of faux just to cause a, a little bit more transparency and some variation here and i want to put just a real thin 
You don't want to press very hard. Just a real thin little like veil of color sitting up on top of this here, of these yellows and stuff. And see how it just sets those yellows into the painting. That's what makes them pretty. So we just pick up a little bit on each, and you just pick up like on the corner here. Oh, that's pretty. I love that. Yeah, well, just lightly, and I could use this to create like a little edge out here or something. You know, and sometimes put a, a lot of it on a petal, sometimes just a little bit. There, that keeps it nice and pretty. Yeah, we'll just put some of this right into that. Let that red come through right in there. That's nice, nice soft little red coming through on that one. And I usually wipe my brush in between each time. Sometimes I'll pull out. Okay. There we go, like that. And now we need, we've got a little bit of a conflict here, so I'll maybe put just an edge of this one right back up on top of that one there. And that'll be kind of pretty. Then I'm going to take just a little bit of my yellows, like this on the edge of my brush. Maybe a bit of that white in there. A bit of that yellow and white. Don't tap it up right on the corner here of my brush. And we will just kind of tap that around there. Maybe a bit more of that white and faux there. And just kind of tap that around to create a little center. Using just, I, I have one corner loaded and I tap it heavy. Then I use the other corner, which is very transparent, just to kind of soften it out. Just kind of tap around. So if I want it heavy, I tap with that corner and then I'll just soften it off with that corner there, like that. And you have a pretty little flower there. That one's kind of neat. If you want to see some more white in it or something, you can add some more of your original faux right up here like that and put some more white down on the top of that there. So that petal really pops forward right there. Let's put a little heavier one right up here too. There we go. That's kind of nice, kind of pretty. And, you know, you can do it again if you, if you, uh, you know, tint it up again if you don't quite like the coloring on it. I'm going to take that yellow back again here and let's come right into our bird. That's a bit bright, so I'm going to, I'm just going to, uh, let's just tap some of that off of there. Get into some more raw sienna. I don't want him to become too bright here. So I'll put some of that on him and I'm going to take some nice warm naphthol red light here. Just a bit of that. And we'll just lightly wash that into his head here. And you can get onto the background a little bit. It doesn't hurt anything because the background, none of these colors will show up on the background. That black will just drink up the color and won't reflect anything. So that's one thing that the, uh, you know, in all the years I painted Zostava, the you know, Zostava technique comes, the Russian Zostava technique comes from this technique, the Chippendale. And the, uh, you know, they, the Zostava painters tint quite heavily right over the the flower right into the background doesn't make too much a difference now I'll put some cool color some of that red violet which is my cool tint uh, and I want it to tone down a bit so I'm going to add just a bit of burnt umber to that just the tone a bit and we'll put that cooler tint here to the back of this to the shadow side here that'll be nice maybe a little cool tint in here kind of have some fun with it there we go. And then I'll, I'll take some of my veiling color right on my brush. And we'll come in here and we'll put a nice veil of the softness of the this right up here. Just go right through there and it just kind of softens that out. And again, you can repeat it a couple times until you get to the, the right amount that you want to have on that. That's kind of pretty. And I'll put a little bit of that here on the, the edge of my brush corner and stroke through like this and give him the look of like feathering on his wings. So I'll pick up a little bead of it on the edge and it picks up like it's on the edge of his wings there. We can kind of stutter this down here. And this will kind of feather him up a bit. Here, like that. There we go. Just like 
like that. It's kind of nice. And through his body here just a bit. And then we'll take some right here. Maybe not quite that much. Just tap that off your brush. Find the right amount. Stroke through his tail. And I'm just not going to reload. I'm just going to let it run off the tail here as it heads back here to the, the shadow part here. Fading away. Just like that. So his tail fades away. And that's good. Now I want to clean up. Um, I'm just going to rinse my brush here for a second. Kind of clean up the edge of that there. Just like that. So now we'll just go through. Let's do a, um, let's do a leaf here real quick. A leaf goes... We're just going to tint these leaves nice warm pine green, like this. Nice warm pine green. You can uh, add a little phthalo blue to that, and which will cool it off. Let's step back just a bit here now. A little phthalo blue will cool it off, or a little sienna into it will make it more of a, a beautiful yellow green. You can add a little umber to it to tone some of them down too. That works nice. Just make sure you mix in a little bit of extender there with that. Just so you can look for some color variations in your leaves. I like the ones to the outside to have maybe a bit of umber or a bit of raw sienna in it. So they're not quite as bright. Here. Got that one just a bit bright. Get a bit bright. Just take some of it out there. And retint it with a little more toned. Or if you want a little blue-green. Add a little bit of that. And let's do those little things there. And a little more right here. There we go. You can take a little phthalo into that. Maybe even a little umber or a little black, which I didn't put out. But uh, you can use that to help create a shadow. Any kind of cool shadow uh, tint right up against the base. So a little phthalo. A little phthalo blue, a little umber. Bird umber works well. You can even use a little black. I try to avoid black, but black does work very nice. And you could also use, uh, instead of using pine green, you could also use phthalo, phthalo green. And then add lots of yellow. So either one will work. Phthalo green, phthalo green blue. Very nice colors. There we go. For now, what I'll do is I'm going to just just soften that out. Just pick up a little of my veiling color. And I like a little bit of, uh, a, it, not quite pure white. I don't want it to compete with the flowers a little bit. So I'm going to take a little yellow and a little of my yellows, a little green and some white right here. Create kind of a real soft, light green veiling color. And just stroke through a couple of these just to soften. So it's not pure white here coming on. Like that. There we go. That's kind of pretty. Get a few streaks through. And that'll be a little softer so it doesn't compete as much with the, uh, the flowers. If you get it too light, or it, it will start to compete with the flowers just a bit. So. So then we'll just add a little bit to that. A little scroll out there. A little softer out here. There, like that. Use the brush just looking for some streaks. Just a couple strokes on each one. Just getting some streaks. Sometimes pull out. That works. That's working good. Around up there. There we go. And so those are nice and soft up against those other flowers. So that works really well. I'm going to rinse that color out here. And let's take some warm red here. A little bit of extender into that. And let's tint our berries. A little naphtha red light. And tint our berries. You could have a little yellow in there if you want on a few of them. Like a little Hansa will make a little orange. You know, you can have some of that. That's a bit much, so I'll just tint that again. And then down here, have some right down there. 
Wow, that's a little too heavy there. That's going to... That kind of grabbed me. I picked up a little too much there. And just wipe that a couple times. Took that off. There we go. Now we'll pick up some cooler red violet here. And use that down into the shadows here. Kind of tint that around. Vary the amount so some of them, one of these can be a little more red violet. That's kind of nice. Or you can mix the red violet and the red together and you get a beautiful medium red when you do that. So I'll just use that as a cool color. That works. Now we'll just leave that in the brush. Let's just come up here and tap into a little bit of white, a veiling color. And we'll just kind of stroke through. Kind of swirling your brush just a bit here. Just kind of swirling it around. And get that nice veil and you get some different colors out there on it. That's kind of nice. That's what I'm looking for. There you go. Just like that. And this, you can even load a little warm yellow and swirl through. That's kind of nice too. Might want to, and you can put little shines on them. That's kind of nice. Just come back and just tap a little bit of the white as a little shine on them if you want. That veiling, the, the secret to all of this is just making sure you have enough full medium so the veiling paints it and, and doesn't uh, doesn't overpower the painting. I mean, doesn't opaque everything out. So, you know, if you feel like you're having no control here, like everything is disappearing, add more full medium to your to your paint. You, you're whiting everything out too much. Let's go up. We've got just a couple of flowers left here. Let's go up. Uh, let's make a nice blue one here. Now, I love the blue when it sits on the blue-violet side which is going to be our ultramarine blue. So I'm going to use some ultramarine blue up here. And we'll create this ultramarine blue. That's kind of a pretty one up here. Ultramarine blue. Maybe a little bit of the uh, red violet into that back here. Love that ultramarine blue and the red violet. It's real pretty here. And, uh, boy, that looks really nice just like that. I think I'm just going to go right to veiling it. And I'll just take a little bit of the white color right through. We'll go right into veiling. Stroke that through a couple times. There we go. Well, that's a pretty one up there. I love the combination of that ultramarine blue and red violet. I didn't, I, for years, I was not a purpley person, but the more I paint with these combination of this blue, I love the blue. I'm a blue person. Blue is my favorite color. But when I combine it with that red violet, the more I paint with it, the more I'm liking it. I love those two together. I love their, their reaction. And <clears throat> I'm going to put some of that right down here, too, onto this one. This is a pretty one down here. Take some of this ultramarine blue. Yeah, maybe we'll leave it just a bit more ultramarine blue on this one. You could have it more red violet if you like it. And we'll add just a little red violet in here. Right around in the cool areas there. Now we'll veil that one. Here. Keep this one a little soft, even though I want to get some interest here. A little soft because it's sitting underneath this one. And I'll pop this one in. Kind of like that. And this one can just come up a little bit more because it's to the outside here. Just kind of follow your streaks. Just kind of follow the kind of shape of the petals here. Put them in, into place. And if you don't reload, your streak stays really soft. 
you can go over with white and get more streaks, which is kind of nice to have if a petal up here towards, but out towards the outside edge, you don't really want that. There we go. Something like that. That's kind of a pretty one right there. And um, let's see, we have yellow we need to repeat still, so let's repeat a little of our yellow. I'll keep a little raw sienna in it this time, keep it softer. We'll put that in. Put some yellow out here on these. And maybe even a touch of red out here. Let's go a little bit of red into that one. Maybe just a bit of red. And then we'll veil that. Yeah, just overstroke it. It's just that easy. Just like that. And you let what happens happen. You can, won't be able to copy it exactly a second time because, uh, you know, your brush loads a little different each time. And different brushes are going to give you different looks. But you're not going to be able to copy it each time. That's what I like about it. Each one will be a little different and the design will kind of stand on its own. I like that. There we go. That's kind of pretty. Now we can take while we have some of that yellow in our brush here. Take some of that yellow again, reload with a little bit of that white and the yellow here. There's like that. And we can uh, tap some of our center into these flowers again. Got a little heavy there. I'm just going to tap that off a bit and then we'll just kind of just go around here just a bit. Kind of give a different center here. There we go. That's kind of a pretty little center. And we'll come up here to this one. Kind of give a center. Just tap that around. It's a very, very simplistic center. And let's just take a little bit of green with that. And our veil and our yellow and the green right up here on the edge of our brush. And we can tap on a little calyx onto the back sides of these little guys. Give them a little dose of color there. You can even use that to add any other accent leaves, but I'm going to do some gold. Um, on the smaller plaque, I did some gold or accent strokes too. I'll show you that tone gold accent stroke. Those are kind of pretty too. So then uh, we'll come over here with. Uh, this big guy now it's a little bit dry so just well it's not really too dry it's but I might give it just a bit more of an extender there and let's see let's let's do this one more of a white rose um, here because I like the I like the white but we'll tint in some color so let's go into uh, the inside of the flower we'll go some red and some red down into the uh, bowl here and some red violet down into the cool center here. A little bit more burnt under here so it doesn't get too bright on us. We'll tint a little bit of that down there. So it's just like a like a red flower base or or basically the uh, berries here. Okay. And then um, work all of them. Just tint tint the colors you want. I mean in the instructions I'll put some just some suggestions for you, you know, for doing things and you know, you, you can tint any color you want. The only thing I don't suggest is that you tint every color on, on an object. That'll make it look like a rainbow. But reds and yellows together, blues and, and, and some of the red violets together, um, you know, those are all real pretty. Yeah. Variations here. And now, then just stroke this. And this will be just like any other flower. We'll just overstroke this, this. And I'm just going to pull some of these strokes here this way. I'll pick up some of that veiling color. And I'll just pull some of my strokes across like this just to get that nice powerful front bowl. And then a few times here and here into the center. Around like that. Pulling these out. Like that. There we go. And um, let's add a 
bit pulling right into the hole this way. I'm going to drop this very soft little light down from there. In the other Chippendale, uh, in the Chippendale DVD series, of course, we paint a lot of different types of roses. Um, and we usually put light coming up from the base of the, the flower up, which is quite pretty. But on this, I'm going to keep this rose very soft because it's out. He's out from where I really want the, the center, you know, from where you're going up towards that bird. So I don't want to, I mean, I want you to see the rose here, but I don't want to give a tremendous amount of interest to the rose and, and you know, pull your eye out here too much. So we'll just streak up his, the, the, uh, the bowl there just a little bit and just leave it like that. I think that'll be very nice. Just like that. And then we'll just take a little yellow. A little bit of our yellows. Some of our whites. Maybe even little greens into that. A little nice little yellow green here. Into our veiling color. And you can see that veiling color that I made up. I, you know, for the beginning painting, I got probably a good half of it left. So it doesn't take very much. And, and you can see the little drops of paint I've only used maybe a third of the little drop of paint that I have here. So it doesn't take very much to do any of this painting. There, that's got that there. And uh, now we need to, I'm going to take my little quill out here. We just need to make a nice dark. Now you can use black or or uh, you can take, uh, since I don't have black on my palette right here, I'll just make a black, a red and some, some red violet, some phthalo blue and uh, some pine green, make a nice dark black color here, but you could use black. And we'll give the uh, bird here in, uh, an eye, and I'm just going to give him a, um, when we, when we uh, do this, I'm just going to come in here a little bit like this, and I'm just going to give him a little line here up to the front of his eye, and then uh, we'll make a little... Uh, a little line right there like that. Okay, then uh, pick up a little more paint and we'll make a little oval right back here in the back part of his eye. There we go, right there. That's kind of cute. And then I'll take a little bit of white, some white color here, and or the faux in the white, what I have here. And I'll just put like a little, uh, like a backwards J here underneath the eye. And just like that, just a little backwards J underneath the eye, which um, lighten it up. And then a little shine in front of the eye there. And then we'll take some of our yellows and the whites, yellows and the whites here. Make a nice lighter yellow color. And yeah, that's about good. We'll give him just a nice little beak like that. That's pretty color on him. And you can do any kind of liner work you want, like a little white or something to help clean up any areas or anything. Make sure that this front edge of his wing has got a nice little dose of that there so that pops up there on top. But that's kind of kind of pretty there for, for that one there. And uh, now what we'll do is I'm going to show you some um, little stippling uh, techniques to the outside here. And then we'll, we'll paint with some tone gold. But before I do that, I'm going to go get it dry. So I'm going to go get it dry. And we'll come back and uh, I'll show you some little stippling with some of the gold and some little trim, some little details. Okay, back in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. Now, what I do, I'll pull these colors over here and be a little careful. Got it dry so we can continue on here. I'm going to give the surface a light coat of extender medium. You don't want too much because you don't want this to bleed out, what we're going to do. But I'm going to give the entire surface here, what I'm going to be working on, a light coat of extender medium. Okay, make sure everything is dry. 
Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is, I don't like uh, the coldness, even though I put some red out here, I don't always like the coldness, let me step back just a bit, of what goes on here and in, in, in out here. So what I, what I started doing a few years ago was just taking a paper towel with a little water and, uh, and um, I'm going to put out some gold. Now, this is the Heritage Multimedium Gold. It is a little more opaque than some of your other golds and uh, that you use out there and what some of them that I've been using in the past. Um, and so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to also tone it down just a bit. I'm going to take a little bit of my red and a little bit of my burnt umber here and add that to the, to the gold. I like it slightly on the reddish side here. So I get this nice kind of toned gold. Maybe just, that's just a little too red for me. So a little more umber into it. So I get this nice little toned gold here. That's kind of pretty. And you can tint the gold really easy with all kinds of different colors. And blues and greens. It's really pretty that way. And then I'm going to add some water here to it too. And thin this out. So I can use this and, and get some variation. A little bit of the pure in it. Just like this. And tap it and that's what you're going to see here. And then I'm going to come through and just lightly tap this out here to the outside here of this, right to the right in, in into the background here, right in towards the center. And you just you don't want to go too heavy or get too much, but you can see it's it's just a little there just to help break up some of that outside uh, here of the uh, design. I'll go right in. Put a little heavier on the, uh, if you get too much, like I did there, just tap the dry end of the paper towel there. But uh, a little heavier towards the outside rim here. That's what I like. So I get a little heavier yet outside here. It makes kind of a neat little border. But you don't want it to... Um, you know, you can get all different kinds of effects. Some people, you can take some faux medium in a plastic bag and all that kind of stuff. But that just, uh, what that'll do, you can see, that's just a nice soft. If you get uh, too heavy of it there, it'll compete against your painting. So we don't want to do that. But a little bit of it here is just nice. Look to the outside. Watch your painting the entire time you're doing this. Watch the amount of contrast your painting has and make sure that you don't get too much there. If you do get too much and it's all dry and you get too much, you go, oh no, I got too much. Just wash a little bit of your black, maybe you black and red over it and soften it down. And I'm going to put this lightly, some of this just lightly into the background here, just a whisper of it here onto the bottom of this box here. I'm, I'm actually going to be washing in some reds into this too, because I want this uh, box bottom here to be a little bit more on the red side. So I'm going to take a little red with this and I'm going to squeeze out a little bit more burnt umber here and uh, just a bit more here. There we go. Just a little. And some nice warm with some of that gold and kind of streak this through the, the box down here too. So the box will be a little bit warmer and red and uh, and so, I'll, and I'll carry that band all the way up here on the outside. So gold and to some of the red and the umber here, and kind of streak that like that. And then um, just take some of that gold here and stipple through that too while that's wet. So you get kind of this mark through. So you have some of that reddish color in there, and then some of this stippling and stuff. And then this, when the stippling dries, I'll give a light little liner work, a little gold liner work around it, and uh, I think that'll be pretty. So you just lightly see it as a, as a kind of a reddish, and uh, kind of hard for the cameras and stuff to pick it up, because it's depends on how you hold it. You see the golds and stuff in there, but it's kind of nice. So you can put the, you know some of these golds right into these other colors when they're wet like that, and that's kind of nice. And don't forget to do the edge here. Just like that. There are quick ways to add a lot of interest to your painting. And they work really nice. Now I'll just take some of that. I'm just going to take some gold and red and a little umber and stuff. And just kind of just wash that right up here into the sides. Onto the sides here. 
You got a little cut edges here. I know you can't see that very well, but man, I do like the way this is coming out. <laughs> you can see the goals in there. It's kind of pretty. And um, when I uh, put that uh, final little uh, lights and stuff on, you know, in, in on the inside, that'll tie it together. We'll use the same gold here in just a minute, and we'll go around the uh, inside of the design with some little accents of this color. So I, I kind of wash it on like that, but then you don't want, you know, you, since we tapped everything, you just want to come back and just tap this lightly like that so that uh, it has that kind of tapped look to it too. Now what I'll do when this is all done is I'll put a stripe of gold when it's all dry. I'll put a stripe of gold up around the edges there. Make sure that all looks good here. But I'll put a stripe of gold up and around and uh, that will uh, um, kind of tie everything all together. We'll put a little gold stripe, a little decorative stripe there on the bottom of this too. Now what I'll do here is I'm just going to take, uh, I'm going to tap some of this gold out right in through. You just use your, you can use your finger or dry paper towel. I just want it there, but just very lightly here. Back behind and into the flowers there. And it's still going to stay wet for a long time because you have that, you know, that uh, extender medium on it. That works really nice. So once you have it there the way you like it, then I'll go back, maybe grab my number six, um, little uh, that or even uh, change up maybe even use like a small little filbert here or a little round brush let's just take some of our gold that we have here and we'll just put some of this gold with some of the toner in here right under our little filbert here and we'll come in and we'll create some little gold flowers little almost like pushed out little flowers here just like that little gold flowers that will come through and you know carry some of the little accents around just like that that's kind of nice here we'll pick up a bit more so I'll just add quite a few of these I, I usually will add quite a few of these around the design so I'll just make like little dot flowers but I like them very casual. I don't like to make them perfect. Yeah, I like them really casual. There we go. Make the little shapes of some leaves and stuff to them. And just add the last. I think they just, I like them because they add like a little shine into the design. And I like that. go and you can also just add uh, as little accent leaves too so you can just add some of this just as accents around the painting too which works nice like make this an explosion of just gold areas coming back up from there and little gold flowers And strokes around. It's kind of pretty. Then we'll just kind of finish it all up with some stripes, which you'll see in the final photo. So it's it's a fast painting technique. What is taking us um, here a little over an hour to paint this, hour and twenty minutes or so to to paint this little design. And I spent I think just as much time at the hair dryer than anything else so but it's a really kind of a fast painting technique i love it the uh, uh white and that veiling just kind of brings it all together so it starts out as a white underpainting and then a little shadow and then a white the tinting and the veiling and it's really kind of an easy uh easy uh, uh process to uh to paint the hardest thing that uh and in in all the countries and everywhere that i taught this the hardest thing and the biggest problem I see most artists having with it is that they use too much white and they'll they'll opaque out everything that they've painted. So, you know, be very, very aware of that as you're painting, you know, of, of using maybe too much white. So just keep that in mind. If you see something that's, 
you know, it's, it's starting to uh, disappear, or it looks like it's disappearing, you might just be using uh, too much white, okay? And um, just start to reduce that or add more faux medium, okay? Now, um, if you get done with all this and your gold looks like, oh, maybe it's a bit much, tint it back and that'll be fun and that'll work great. When you get all done with that, maybe a little stripe up through here and a stripe up around to finish it up. Okay. Thanks very much for painting with me. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick little look at Chippendale. It's a fun little technique. You can put it on anything. Little plaques, that little design, I want extra design to give you with this too. Put that on a little plaque, put on a little key holder. You make great little gifts because they're so easy and fun to paint and fast. Okay. So for more div DVDs and more in educational material, look for us at jansenartstudio.com. Thanks for painting with me today. I look forward to painting with you again here at the Jansen Art Studio. Take care. Bye-bye.